Well, today we're doing two main things. We're going to start with some numbers which we're going to need for all sorts of things, as we'll see in a minute. And then we'll introduce nouns, which will give us a chance to think about the complex question of gender. So let's get started. Grüß Gott, hallo, ich bin Billy Badger und das ist Bausteine 1. Herzlich willkommen. First up, numbers. Now, these are not just for counting. We're going to need them for talking about our age, mobile number, address, and all of these other things that we refer to with numbers. Now, in a couple of weeks, we'll use them in time phrases too, for telling the time, for dates, and for much more. Well, let's start with the numbers up to 12. Eins, zwei, drei, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Let's go back over them. Eins. Notice that the EI sound here is an A sound, much like the thing that you see with, and that the S sound at the end is a kind of a S sound. Eins. Zwei. Here we've got the same sound again, A, but we've got the all important S sound at the beginning, followed by the V sound of the W. Zwei, drei, again the same sound, isn't there? A, and the R sound will need some practice, but it's more at the back of your throat rather than formed with your tongue. Drei, vier, here we meet the F sound, the F sound of the German V. Notice that IE is more of an E sound, vier. Fünf, the F is much the same sound again, and we notice that the U has got some dots on it. And th these are called an umlaut, and it really just indicates that the sound changes from the normal U sound. Here it's much like the vowel sound in the words took or book. Fünf, sechs, the S at the beginning is a Z sound, and the CHS at the end is much like an English X, Zex. Sieben. Again, the Z sound of the S at the beginning and the E sound of our IE that we have met before. Acht. Here we have our CH sound. This time it's at the back of our throats. Acht. Neun. This is the typical cultivated OI sound of the letter combination EU. Neun. Zehn. Now watch out for the Z sound of the Z and the drawn out vowel sound in the middle. 10. 11 is easy enough, and 12 needs a bit of care, but the beginning is the same as the zv of 2. We also meet another umlaut. This time it gives us the ö er sound in English words, at least Australian English, words like bird, herd, or word. 12. Continuing on from 12, we just put two numbers together, as you'll see here. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. With all of these, we can shorten the 10 part so that it's more 19 rather than 19. To keep going, you just need to know the words for 20, 30, 40, and so on. And here we have them 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So you can see we're just adding on the suffix zig, which is like the ty, t of 30, 40, and so on in English. To form the numbers in between, we use this sort of formula. 43 would be 43, which is, as you can see, 3 and 40. 24 would be 24, which is, of course, 4 and 20. Let's see if you can work out these numbers. 47, 39, 56, 28, 75. Well, how did you go? There are lots of opportunities to practice this in your textbook, so make sure you check out Chapter 2 in Baulsteiner 1 while we move on to nouns. Now, nouns are commonly described as people, places or things. But I like to think of them as any word that you can put the word the in front of. 
in German, we can recognize them very easily. If we look at this sentence, jetzt geht der Mann in die Stadt. Now the man is going into the city. If we compare the sentences, we can see a few things. Both sentences start with a capital, as we'd expect, but in the German sentence, there are two other words that start with a capital letter. These are the nouns, because in German, we really want you to be able to recognize the nouns. And that capital letter is a good way to make them stand out. The next thing that we might notice is that there are different words for the in German. We have der Mann and we have die Stadt. In both cases, these words der and die mean the. This is the definite article and it's used when we are talking about a particular man and a particular city, as we are in this situation. And if you know anything about German or have read the introduction of our textbook, then you'll know that these words, and actually there are three of them, they give us some information about the gender of the noun because we have three genders in German. Genders for people, rather problematically, given our current understanding of gender, run along pretty traditional lines. Words for women, like these ones, are feminine. Those for males, like these ones, are masculine. Now some words, like for example the word for a child, are neuter. But mostly we're dividing people up into two genders. If you're interested in questions of gender neutrality, have a look in the textbook because we touch on it there. But it's also important, I think, to remember that things also have a gender. That means that not only everyone around you, but also everything around you, from a German point of view, will either be masculine, feminine or neuter. And one way to communicate this is through the definite articles. Any masculine subject will be indicated by the article Dao. Looking around me here in Hobart, there are a number of masculine things, for example, Dao Strand, Dao Hund, or Dao Fluss. Feminine subjects, on the other hand, are signaled by the article D. So there is, for example, Die Möwe, Die Sonne, or Die Wolke. And finally, neuter subjects are pretty easy to spot too because they use the article das. There's das Auto, das Schiff or das Bootshaus and so on. So everything has a gender. But how do you know what the gender is? How do you know if something is masculine, feminine or neuter? Well, the honest answer is you don't. The gender has often got more to do with the word itself than the thing it represents. So essentially, we just have to learn the genders when we're learning the words. If I know, for example, that a mobile phone is a handy, then I need to know that it's das handy so that I will know that it's neuter. And in the coming weeks, you'll see that we refer to gender in lots of different ways. So it's important to know the genders so that we can communicate more precisely. There are some useful vocab lists in your textbook, Baustainer Eins, but I want you to start thinking about things that you are interested in. What nouns will you need to learn to be able to talk about your hobbies? Start looking them up and writing them down. But finally, I want to ask you if one boathouse is das Bootshaus, how do you think we'll refer to more than one boathouse? And this is where it can seem a little bit confusing because regardless of the gender, we always refer to plural things with the article D, no matter whether it's a group of masculine things, feminine things, neuter things, or even mixed gender things. So that, at least, is easy. Now, in English, we just add an S onto the nouns to make the plural. In German, each word has its own plural form that we need to learn. Now with practice, of course, this gets easier, but at the beginning, it does need some work. Let's look at some examples. And of course, there are lots more in your textbook to refer to. If we have lots of boathouses, remember one boathouse is 
das Bootshaus, it's neuter. Here we make a couple of changes. The plural is die Bootshäuser. We're adding an umlaut and an er. One seagull, die Möwe, it's feminine, but if we refer to a whole lot of seagulls, we add on an N, so we'll say die Möwen. And finally, the word for bus is masculine, der Bus, and if we have more than one of them, our plural form is die Busse, where we just add on an extra SE. This takes some getting used to because there are lots of different ways to create plural words. So do spend some time with the lists and exercises in your textbook, noting in particular the words that you think you'll need the most. And so that's some of what we're going to be looking at this week. There's lots more to practice in your textbook, Bausteiner 1. So head over to Chapter 2 and get started, and I will see you next time. Danke fürs Zuschauen, auf Wiedersehen und tschüss.